Hey, um, so I'm a little nervous because there's always the possibility that I will upload this video or that I will edit this into a video and then upload it. But um, I don't know that I'm going to necessarily. This is sort of just a video diary, but at the same time, I think it would be beneficial to a lot of people if I did upload this. I definitely just want to wait until I tell this person about more about me. But I will date this video. It is, well, it's 1224, so it's technically Saturday, but it's Friday, we'll say. July 30th, 2021. Um, basically, I was watching this video that really... Today has been a confusing day for my mental state. Everything has just been, I found out more about people around me, and I've been thinking more about the people around me. Um, even prior to that, and I have some people who are thinking, who are trying to find out more about me, which is weird. I have a coworker, who I'm not going to name, but he has something similar to me. He doesn't like to talk about it, so I'm not going to name it. Um, but it's important. It's relevant to the story. And like I said, I think the story could help a lot of people. He, he told me that someone was comparing me to him. It was a woman who was interested in getting more information on me because of something that me and this guy have in common. Not exactly the same thing, but kind of similar. Um, and so me and him were talking about it for like an hour um, because we had similar stories. Uh, the way people treated us, the way um, our upbringing and stuff like that, and problems and benefits that we both have or like strengths and weaknesses that we both have it was like we were almost the same person but he is considerably older than me um like not that like he's not a fucking like 80 year old right i'm not gonna say his age either though because there are ways you could track this guy down that i'm not gonna help you do that um but, you know, so, I'm, I'm going to be very vague about this guy, but we were talking for a while, and, well, basically, my story, I'm antisocial as fuck. The only people I have, well, I was antisocial as fuck. Let me explain. That's the point of this video, is the was... Um, we'll say right around the time I was maybe four, we found out I was an autistic. I had autism, just putting it out there. And, um, well, that really started to affect me a lot more. You know, it, it was like the doctor who like pitched that hypothesis, He he's like, He's like, yo, I, I think your kid might be autistic. Um, and they were, so my parents are like, what? what? He seems normal. And um, not that, that it, there isn't anything not normal about it, because that's... They, they have you started using more general terms as of late, but at the time it was, he seems normal, what are you talking about? Um, and the doctor was like, he, he's got some quirks, um, so you might want to look into that. And officially, we got the diagnosis a little bit later, but, um, that started affecting me a lot more as time went on. 
and basically things went um, a little sideways when it came to me being social. I had a friend in school named Jason, um, but he went away, and again, the only reason I was his friend, or the only reason we were friends is because he came to me. He forced his way. I wanted nothing to do with this guy, but he forced his way into my life. Um, he literally fucking, as it turns out, he lived across, the, basically, he was in school, um, and a few days after we met in school, we found out, oh shit, he literally lives across the street, like literally, his house is maybe 20 feet away from my house, it's literally the house in front of my house, so, uh, he, one day he literally just walked up into my front yard and was like, hi, uh, you're Michael, right, we met at school the other day, I was like, what the how the fuck did you find me? And and we met at school the other day, and you found me. And he's like, well, he and he, and he explains. He's like, well, uh, I, I saw you come home from school at the same time I came home from school, and I found out you lived in front of me, in front of the house. And I was like, how fuck, how fucking long has this been going on? <laughs> Just imagine. He's like, like, how long has this been going on? I guess if you think about it, it's kind of, kind of common. We would naturally go to the same school if we live so close to, you know. But yeah, it was kind of weird. So he was like my best friend for a while, but he moved away eventually, and I was back to having no one. I didn't pursue anyone. I didn't go near anyone. The teachers fucking called me weird for not going near people, and I think some teachers had told kids at the school that I was... Because cause they know what's going on. I was in the special... Well, I wasn't in special ed, right? But I was... I, I had other things at school that were kind of like that. Um, I did the regular classes, but I also went and did other stuff. So, the teacher... I guess she told some kids because... That I was different. Because the kids just turned on me one day. So someone told them. And eventually, you know, one of them was like, he's... I know this is like a scene from fucking Spongebob or something, but one of the kids was literally like, he's different, attack him, or something like that, and I, so I was bullied mercilessly for this, um, and people did not like me, uh, combined with that, I didn't do too well in school, because nobody fucking liked me, so I was more focused on that than actual school, I had Jason, and I had a bully who... He went by, like, Trey or something, but he was fucking merciless. I mean, he choked me out. He he would hit me. Um, I fucking damn near had a fucking broken arm. So, uh, I, 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 I was always being picked on by people. Eventually, my dad taught me how to fight. And, and so I came back to school. I just fucking beat his ass. I, I, I want to say I broke his arm, too. I was like, yeah, don't fucking touch me. Um, that made people scared of me more, though. Sure, I was safe, but didn't exactly help me socialize. So, and, and now look, I'm being threatened with expulsion, and which is bullshit, and I, I'm now known as a brute, a title that still follows me. Although now it's more of a joke, and I actually laugh at it sometimes. Uh, whereas before, it was something that was just following me. I didn't want anything to do with it. So, you know, there's that. Um, eventually, because I'm not doing so well in school, they took me out anyways. So I was homeschooled for a while. Well, now the only kid I know is my brother. Well, um... Another kid saw me, um, maybe like a year ago. Uh, you guys, actually, he's on a, a year ago, what the fuck? Um, a year later, after I'm taken out of school. Um, you guys, I, I have videos with him. Uh, his name was Matt. He lived across the street from me. Until, 
personal issues, and then he decided he had nothing left here and abandoned me. Um, he didn't abandon me completely. We kind of just grew apart, but stung a little bit when he said he had nothing left in Texas or Colleen, for that matter, that he was happy to move back to Michigan. I understood where he was coming from, but that, that really fucking hurt. So... I also had um, a fr another friend who was the son of a nurse that took care of my brother. Um, but she did something that my mom could never forgive. They're cordial now. I'm not really sure that they're... I'm not even sure that they would call themselves fucking acquaintances anymore. But they're, they're cordial. Um, well, when they split up, I kept in contact with him for a while but eventually we just couldn't make it work anymore um you know long distance relationships don't aren't just for you know a, a boyfriend or girlfriend situation just in general if you forget to make the effort one day you just might not be able to ever so despite my efforts to reconnect with him, uh, reconnect, I've tried to reconnect with all my friends. It just never worked out, uh, except Jason. Jason, I, I wouldn't even know what the, I don't even know his fucking last name. We were buddies from school. And then he went back to fucking, uh, I can't even remember. But the only person I've ever been able to, I had a girlfriend whose name we'll say is SF. And I, I did that pretty badly, honestly. That I fucked up. But the uh, the long distance thing, we actually made that shit work because we made the effort to. Well, really, our, our parents made the effort to have us communicate. But you know, we made that work. We recovered that. They went to fucking, we'll say fucking California, even though I don't think it was California, but it was really far away from Texas. Um. Or how f fuck? How fucking far is California from Texas? I got a fucking U.S. map. Cause I'm gonna feel real fucking stupid. Okay, it was a little. It was. We'll say more like fucking Wyoming. Or what? What is that one? Fuck! I'm bad at this. I'm fucking. Um. Fuck. W A Want beef oh that never mind. Never mind. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's Washington. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, well um but the Yeah, oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm never gonna recover from that. Fuck it. I'm just gonna embrace the stupid. Sorry, I changed my environment. The garage got really hot, so if the sound, if I, if it, if it, the sound sounds different, uh, my bad in advance. I mean, hopefully it sounds better, but it might not. So, anyways, the that's the only long distance relationship I could make work because everyone involved wanted to make it work, right? I mean, look, I was, we were like fucking, we we were like fucking eight, but. So I don't know if that was really love that we were feeling or just elevated friendship or socializing or whatever you would call it. I don't know. It certainly doesn't feel as re didn't feel as real as what I'm feeling now for someone else, but it was what I thought was love and that's really all that I need all that matters for me. But anyways, that her parents and my parents tried their best to make it work and it it worked. I said something that offended her, and that's what sent me off the deep end, so that made my socializing worse, because I'm like, well now, fuck, I'm going to offend everybody that comes across me. And I was so worried about that, that aside from a few people like Matt and LC and, you know, aside from a few people, whenever they would want to talk to me, I would just literally fucking tell them, yeah, you fuck off, I'm not interested. I, I figured, I, I was so worried about hurting people that I... I embraced it and embraced what didn't need to happen, and I made that happen. 
I, I was tell, talking to my coworker again. I was like, I, I told people, I was like, I don't want to be around other people because I'm just going to hurt them. So I'm going to make it quick. I'm going to rip the bandaid off and rip whatever hairs along with it. I'm just going to say, fuck off. There you go. And I, I told Matt that, and he stuck by me. He insisted. I was like, what kind of fucking... What kind of person are you? Elsie, I didn't really have a choice. I wanted to be cordial because I didn't really have a choice but to hang out with him. And, I mean, he was like my best friend, so I... I was, I, I was like, you know what? Life has put you in my hands. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna run with it. And that's really how I've been with all people, but... I was watching that video, and basically Jordan Peterson, the, the reason I'm making this video, says that, you know, if you fuck up with making your kid social, they're fucked for life. There's no fixing it. I am proof of the opposite. I have friends now. Friends that weren't put in my lap. Well, I mean, they kind of were. And I have someone who actually likes me. Um... I think, anyways. Uh, you know, in, in more than just a friendly way. But I had a coworker, um, different coworkers. Uh, we're gonna say so. We'll call the one I was talking to earlier about the disabilities. Uh, Slade. We'll go with Slade, and um, we'll call the other one MT. Well. Oh, so I guess there's also, um, we'll say D. Uh, D was, she was the first person who helped me. She knew about my, I, I'm not really sure how, but it, it got out. Um, I guess when I was doing my job interview, because I have to disclose that. Um, or at least they made me think I did, uh, that I was an autistic. So when she was, there, she was there to help me and she was so nice. I kept fucking up and she was the only person, the only person to actually be patient with me until I met MT. MT was actually very, very nice to me. Um, but D stuck by me. She helped me out. Um, I told her my story, she told me hers, and she was very, very patient with me. Um, as I said already, obviously. But literally my fucking job was to wipe down tables. Shouldn't be hard, but somehow I found a way to fuck it up, right? I was too slow. My boss told me, hey, you're costing us money, which is why your schedule is so inconsistent. We're trying to get you on less busy days. So that way when you get better, which hopefully you will, um, you'll actually be helping us out a lot more. Right now, you're kind of hurting us, and I was like, oh, oh, fuck, cool. It took me a little while, but D helped train me. I had someone else who was supposed to help train me, but really, she just was like, yeah, you're doing a good job, and no one else thought so. Well, D actually did help me. She thought I was getting better. Um, when her help proved to not be enough... She decided, all right, well, we'll team up with someone. And the workforce actually sent out someone to help me um, because I was with a program with them. And so um, the workforce lady is like, yeah, well, Dee's got the right idea. And I'm actually super glad that you have someone like her to take you under her wing and help you get better. Um, and, and so she was like, yeah, Dee's got the right idea. Um, you just keep with her and she'll help you out. Uh, I... Um, I'll help you out the ways I can, but I think she's the best person for that. So eventually I did start working and I got way better at the job. I am now, as far as I am aware, the only person to hold two positions at my workplace. Um, uh, like, we got someone who is like a backup position. Like, uh, Slade. His, he actually does have a backup position. Um, he mostly works on sandwiches and does dishwashing. Well, I, my job title is still a busser, we'll get to that later, but I serve food and uh, dishwashing. So when 
I was, when I first started dishwashing, it, it was really hard for me. Um, it was another thing where I needed Slade to help me. And he was patient with me. Uh, he told me that they basically, he didn't know I was autistic at first. Um, but he said, I'm sorry, they, they really threw you into the deep end and you really have no way of keeping your head above water. Um, so I'm here to help you. I'll teach you some of the techniques that have worked for me. And you can find your blend of what you need to do. Well, Slade's help was not nearly enough, um, unfortunately, because he was trying to teach me a bunch of stuff that he learned from everyone else while also teaching me his technique. But he was good at his technique and not everyone else's technique. He said the best thing for me to do was to use his technique with someone else's technique. And so he showed me their stuff and he's like, I can never get this to work for me. But my stuff is a blend of their stuff. So you just need to find your blend of stuff. And so he tried to teach me someone else's stuff. That doesn't work, because he can't get that to work. So I went up to that person and was like, hey, how do you do this? And they're like, yeah, they kind of threw you in the deep end, didn't they? And they, were, they told me the same stuff. But they knew their stuff. Slade knew their stuff. Slade knew his stuff. So I used both of them. And I am actually pretty good on dish now. Um, but he, uh, when we were talking earlier, like a few hours ago, uh, two hours ago, fucking in fact, um, because like I said, it's, it's 1246 now, but we were working clothes. So that means we're there until we get our fucking job done. We ain't going home until that bitch is spotless. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so we were talking two hours ago, and he's like, um, I, I mentioned that, like, they threw me in the deep end, and he's like, yeah, and sorry about that, by the way, uh, we had to throw you in the deep end, there was no other way, so Slade's like, well, I have something weird with my mind, um, and I, I, I blurted out, yeah, I'm autistic, um, and immediately I was like, well, shit. Um, and I was trying to think of what to say. Like, do I, do I, do I just say like, ah, oh, nah, just kidding. But no, he told me his secret. I felt obliged to, or I felt honor bound to keep my secret and not lie about it. Um, I guess. And, uh, he's like, doesn't surprise me. There was someone comparing you to me earlier. And I was like, what? Um, and yeah, and I guess, um, the rest of the story, I kind of skipped over a few things, huh? Rewind with me real quick. Uh, D was the only person I talked to because I wasn't interested in talking to anyone. I just wanted to be left alone, but she was nice. So I, I talked to her and she was helping me out. So again, obviously conversations were going to happen, but again, she knows a lot more about me now. Um, but when I first started working there, she told me a lot about herself. I, I said virtually nothing about myself. I didn't, I didn't like who I was. And I, I, I still don't like who I was, but I like who I am now. Um, I had to get in front of it. I had to accept myself before anyone else could accept me. The only problem is when I had no... When I did accept who I thought I was, people still didn't like me, so that, you know, adults and kids, they weren't my friends. No one was my friend, so. But, basically, uh, cut back a few, um, almost a year, almost five months, actually. Cut back to, uh, no, fuck. We'll cut back to two weeks after D got me better at my job. And I met someone who, again, we've been calling MT. She was the nicest person ever. She was the first person to... I mean, aside from D, but she was the first person to treat me with any modicum of respect. Any... Treat me as an equal. My job title was literally fucking busser. And all of the customers that would come in, no disrespect, obviously, um, would rub that in my face. 
they're like, what do you, when, um, they were displeased with something and they wanted to talk to the manager or something, it was like, why don't you get the fuck out of my way, buster? And I was like, okay, well, I guess I know my place in the universe. But, MT saw that I wasn't doing so great, so she asked me how my day was going. She said it didn't look like I was doing so well. Um, and she was just so nice to me that I, 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 I didn't want to talk to her. I wanted, I, I, I almost fucking told her to fuck off. Um, because like, that's what I tell you, I gotta rip the bandaid off. I'm just going to hurt people. But I didn't tell her to fuck off. And even though I didn't really talk to her much, I gave her a simple answer so, so she would go away. I wanted to tell her to fuck off. I wanted to tell her to get fucking bent. But I, I didn't. And that turned out to be the best decision I ever made. The best mistake I never made, rather. Um, I wanted her to go away. But instead I just gave her an answer and was like, my, my day's going fine, I guess. And she's like, that's good to hear. I don't think she believed me. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then she helped me out the same way Dee was helping me out. Um, I, I, I slipped in a puddle of something, right? And, you know, everyone else was laughing at me. <laughs> But she actually seemed kind of concerned, so she came and helped me back up. Um, and I, I was like, oh, that's, that's nice. Um, and then I... We have these things called ramekins. They're little... Dressing cups, I guess. Um, for, like, salads and stuff. Well, I, I dropped one. I, I spilt it all over. Um, and I was like, fuck, she's gonna kill me. Instead she, instead, she just wipes it off, and she's like, hmm, all right. And so my boss comes around, and she's like, yeah, or he's like, yeah, she's got kids. She's used to a mess. And I was like, huh. And so I was, like, I, she, I'm not going to go into any details, but I had a preconceived notion of who she was, which was horribly wrong. And so she... Uh, you know, she was actually nice. The way I figured she was, was the kind of person who thinks she's too good for everything else, but she, she seems like she's, she seems like me, except social. That's the only difference. So, um, I wanted, her, eventually, I wanted her to be my friend, so I just kept getting closer and making conversation. She proved again and again how nice she was, and how... I guess the kids thing is what, you know, like, well, you could still be a stuck-up person, but you have kids. You, if this is some sort of facade, you're really fucking good at it. Like, you don't get it. I'm... I'm skeptical of everyone. But she was the first person I was not skeptical of. I mean, you know, like I said, everyone else is fucking laughing at me as I've fallen over, she seems concerned, she's like, oh no, and she got me, then the other thing is, I am, I, I go by Mike, oh, you know, social media, everything, I go by Michael, right, my name is Michael Davis, but she has almost always called me Mikey, which is really fucking weird, she doesn't like her real name, like, for instance, her first initial is not actually M, um, so, uh, so, she was like, well, um, she, she gives everyone nicknames, and so she called me Mikey, and I was like, what, what the fuck did you just call me? And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, it won't, won't happen again. Um, and then, I was like, actually, kind of has a nice ring to it. <laughs> so, now everyone, well... TikToker calls me Mike, um, but everyone else calls me Mikey, which is weird. Well, my boss, my boss uses it interchangeably. <laughs> For instance, the one time MT has ever gotten mad at me, she called me Michael, and I was like, you know what? You, you've, I don't, I don't like that. 
why why are you doing that? I was like that that that's a good reason to stop, you know. But um yeah, so she gave me a nickname. She she's just the nicest person ever. Um and she really helped me be social cuz she was the first person I ever actually wanted to be social with. I just wanted her to be my friend at first though. Then I wanted to a little bit more. Um but you know, for the first 3 months of knowing this person, I just wanted nothing more than be her best friend. Um, eventually, she wanted me to. She was like, so, so she was like, so do you want to be friends on Facebook? Or, or no, what she said was, she was like, so do I? Do I have you on Facebook and stuff like that? Um, and I was like, no. I feel like you would know if you had me on Facebook, because I'm kind of slow. And she was like, well, let me, um, let me rephrase that. Um, can I have you on Facebook? And she's all nervous and stuff. And so I was like, I was like, yeah, that, that sounds, that sounds nice. Um, and then, uh, we shook hands and I said, so I guess that means we're officially friends, right? Um, and she's like, I, I thought we were friends already. I was like, I, I guess we were, and I don't know, she she smiled and walked off, and I was the happiest I'd ever been. Finally got what I wanted. Um, and, um, yeah, so I didn't include TikToker in this story, because it's not really relevant, but he's another part of it, um, just not something I have to explain. Uh, but then... Like, literally 24 hours after we, uh, added each other on Facebook, um, I, I was stumbling over my words, but I tried to ask her out, and she was like, hey, are you trying to ask me out? I was like, uh, yeah, is that, is that okay? She's like, yeah, it sounds like fun, see you then. So, um, that... I feel like that just proves that video was wrong. They, uh, the Jordan Peterson video goes on to say that if your kid doesn't figure out socializing between two and four, he's fucked. He basically says there's a lot of pa paperwork on how to rectify antisocial behavior, but you can't do it. It's fucked. But I figured it out. I've been antisocial all my life. That's one of the things with autism. And besides that, everyone knew I was different, so no one was going to accept me. But she... She did. The part with Slade was... I, when I mentioned, um... The autistic thing... It, so, as far as I'm aware, she doesn't actually know about that. I'm, I was going to tell her, but never had the opportunity. Um, she said that, or I mean, Slade said that um, someone was comparing me to him, uh, that it was a woman looking for more information on me. Um, and that uh, then when I said, I can't remember what exactly it was I said, but I mentioned, hold on, I mentioned a date, as in a person, not a place or time, um, and he was like, so, um, he's like, so this person doesn't know that about you? And I said, no, at least I don't think so, and I, he's like, so who is this person? And I said, I'm not going to say, but um, I gave a description, and he's like, dude, um, she, she knows. And I was like, how do you know? And it's like, I know who you're talking about, and she seems pretty smart. Um, and uh, I think she was, I think MT was the one trying to get more information on me. I, I was going to tell her at some point, but I haven't gotten the opportunity yet, and I haven't actually seen her in a while. 
I think she still works here. I'm not sure anymore. But. But, uh, I, I mean, I have her number, so all I have to do is get in contact with her if she ever texts me back. <laughs> but this person. I'm not going to put all of her stuff out in the air, but. She gets a lot of attention that she doesn't want to get. Um, and she has told people off because of it. So when I asked her out, I was really scared about getting, well, getting fucking dead, honestly. But she didn't even seem surprised when I asked her out. It was like she already knew. And then... I, I think she knows a lot more about me than I think... I should think. Slade seemed pretty convinced. I mean, it's really bizarre. He's like, dude, she, she knows. She seems smart. I think she was the one trying to get information on me, though. And I, I, basically, uh, when she went up, or when this person was comparing stuff, they said, uh, this person wanted more information on me, and so Slade says, well, we, we don't really hang out that much, um, he's mostly front of house, I'm mostly back of house, or, actually, he's exclusively back of house, and so he says, aside from the occasional quip or something like that, we don't really have that much interaction, and yeah, this, today was the most interaction we'd ever gotten, so, but, um, this person goes on to say, well, you both have this thing with your brains, right? Um, and he's like, well, mine's a little different. Um, cause, well, so, okay, so I'm trying to be vague here, so the dialogue doesn't really match exactly, right? I'm trying to be a little vague here. But he's like, I, I'm a little bit of a different situation, but yeah, um, I, I have this, and uh, he's like, I, I don't think he has that. And this person's like, yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> um, and so when I spill the beans, um, by accident, I actually like, well, I'm an autistic. Um, he's like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Someone was trying to get information on you, and they already seem to know that. I was like, what the fuck? I, I elaborated, and he's like, I'm, I'm not telling it came from a good place. Um, I was like, what? What the fuck does that mean? And, uh, so when I explained the description of the date, he's like, dude, sh she knows. I, he says this because she's smart. But, uh, and I'm not doubting she's smart. She's probably the smartest person I know. But, I, I feel like <laughs> there's something else. I, I know there were a few co-workers of mine in this group chat that I don't have access to that, according to TikToker, um, they are talking shit about me because of my autism. So, I mean, I, I ex you know, I, I guess since she's in the group chat, she would likely know, um... But it's weird that she hasn't said anything to me. And even weirder that she was trying to get information out of someone else. Uh, allegedly. I don't really know that for a fact, so I'm not going to say it. I guess I shouldn't have. I guess I already did kind of say it. We'll find out soon enough. But, again, this whole point of the video is this Jordan Peterson guy, he's like, yeah, no, your kid's fucked if, if this happens. He's fucked, he's going to grow up to be a serial killer. It's un rectifiable and you fucked up it's your one damn job as a parent i'm like um sorry you fucking what so yeah i guess the point of the video is me trying to say like that doesn't that's not necessarily true and i'm living proof of this i mean yeah i guess all of this is just like hearsay there's no proof for it But, I mean, I, I feel like he's going to need to check his science. Like, I 
am by no means smart. I don't do well. I didn't do well in school. I didn't do well in anything. I can't sequence events correctly. I failed history because I knew all the events, but I couldn't get them in the right order. Or I couldn't place a date to them. So... But... I don't know. Um... When I was talking to TikToker about MT, I was like, she didn't even seem that surprised when I asked her out. And, uh, he just said, yeah, that's because she wasn't. And, um, well, everyone at work knows how I feel about MT, apparently. I, I, I brought coffee to work one day. Um... And she was not there, so one of my other co-workers, uh, who we'll call Dom, um, just said, uh, yeah, hey, MT is not here today, so can I have that? And I was like, why would you think this was for MT? It's like, come on, everybody knows. And so another co-worker we'll call Chris just said, um, it's kind of obvious, dude, everybody knows. And then my boss says, well, I kind of forgot, but, I mean, I knew at one point. And I was like, how does everybody know? And they're just like, well, uh, she, she told us. And also, it's kind of obvious when you bring coffee to work, when you bring two coffees to work. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I was fine with, I'm fine with everybody knowing. I just thought she was going to be mad at me. But when I talked to Chris later, it's like, no, well, she, she told everybody. So, I mean. <laughs> Dom says that a lot of people just kind of figured it out by now. Um, but Chris insisted that she told everybody. So I, I don't really know which story to believe. But either way, um, it's not my fault that everybody knows. So not entirely my fault that everybody knows. Kind of, it's kind of my fault that everybody knows. But not entirely. I thought she was going to be mad at me if everyone knew, but no, here she is telling everybody. Which is why I was trying to keep it a secret. Not because I'm worried about it, but because I was, like, worried about her being mad at me. I was like, fuck. But yeah, um... I, I mean, dude, I'm, I feel like I am living proof that it just takes the right kind of people to fix you up a little bit. I had a warped worldview because I had very bad experiences with people. I didn't have a single good experience with... I, okay, so I had a few good experiences with people. I had LC, I had Matt, I had SF, I had... Jason, I had... I had I had them. But they all came and went. Um, oh, I should say... I have a friend called EB that I've mentioned on a few occasions. That I met at Goodwill. He didn't really factor into this story, but I guess technically he is the only friend that I ever went out of my way prior to this job to get. But I found out that he also is just like me, so I didn't really count him because I kind of I kind of figured it out. I know I noticed a lot of mannerisms in him, and I was like, you know what? He probably has the same warped worldview as me, and and he he doesn't. Um, he doesn't he doesn't seem to. He just seems to be. A little different. Um, not that that's a bad thing. I'm fucking, I'm the poster boy for a fucking little different. Or for a little fucking different. I'm the fucking poster boy for that shit. Put that on a t-shirt. A little fucking different. Have my face on it. That's me. <laughs> but. Um, so I'm not talking shit. I don't mean any offense when I tell these stories. I just think they're relevant to my story. And I think my story is relevant to a lot of people. Um, in some way. That. You know, having the right people in your life, you can overcome anything. Um, not to get ahead of myself here. Or to think that I serve some bigger cosmic purpose than I actually serve whatsoever. But, uh, you know, I am 
I have a very low opinion of myself, honestly. I don't think very highly of myself. You know, I'm super cocky when I'm at work, you know, I'm like, I'm the shit, I'm the best person in the world, right? I'm the best at this. And then when I'm around the house and I actually do something good, I am genuinely fucking surprised by it. But I play it off as, well, that's just because I'm the best there is. I'm playing video games with my brother, um, playing Splitgate. And, cause that, that one's fun. I kill his ass, and I'm like, that's what you get fucking with Mikey. Um, and my brother's like, damn, this guy's good. But, it's a complete fucking accident. It's a complete fucking accident, dude. Like, I, I have a very, I, I have a, I have a grown out opinion of myself. The, the point is, the people at work who have now become my best friends, um, they all have a high opinion of me, which I don't have. They tell me what I'm worth, but I don't actually see it. I mean, MT doesn't... <laughs> she, she, she tries to control what she says around me, but I, I, I get an idea of what she thinks of me. But Dom, D... TikToker, they think the world of me, it seems. I mean, maybe not, maybe that's just in my head. Um, oh, TikToker, though? Not a friend I actually earned. He's, a uh, he, literally someone who just, literally, he sat at the same table as me one time. I was, I was sitting down, and he's just like, well, I'm gonna sit here. <laughs> Didn't even, he wasn't even like, do you want to sit here? He's just like, then he started talking to me, and I was like, you know what, man, this guy's fucking awesome. <laughs> I want to be best friends with this dude. And it wasn't so hard, because I been working on my skills with that but at work um when i fail I, I take it very personally and everyone tries to cheer me up and stuff so i know that everyone thinks the world of me or at least it seems that way um sorry i'm getting a little emotional you can probably hear it in my voice the when i'm on the dishes and i'm i'm fucking up miserably i uh this last time i actually told them i was probably gonna put in my two weeks because I'm over here on the slot and if I cross myself out you could put someone better on it and they were like they were like today was just a bad day we all have bad days um you did your best and this wasn't even your fault it was just we were too busy um and everyone was very patient with me but I wasn't patient with myself I just literally the last thing I I said was to my boss was I'm I'm sorry I couldn't keep up with today. Um and so she's like, dude, you're fine. And that's all she said. Well on Tuesday uh, Tuesday, I didn't come into work because I wasn't scheduled for it. Uh but everyone was having a much easier day. I talked to some people. You know, like, yeah, today's easy. Well, what really cheered me up is that they lied to me. Uh, is that um, my boss and MT, that they were talking to each other about me, about how I was feeling kind of down after the Monday. And so they were talking, and they I, they still don't know that I, I know that they're lying. But I, I just went with it. They said that um, Tuesday was even harder because of my absence. Um, so... Uh, my boss and MT are the only ones to say that. Everyone else who was present there said it was the easiest fucking day that no one even came into the fucking store. So I, w I was a little, you know, only a few people said that they no one came into the store, but the first people were saying it was easier than ever. I was like, that proves that I just need to fucking leave, pack up my things. And then MT's like, yeah, we, it was hell, dude. We were overwhelmed and we didn't have you with us, so we were screwed. I was like, you know what? I'll, uh, might stay a little longer. Um, and I have... So I have all these friends and stuff like that, but... That think the world of me, but I don't have that high opinion of myself. I, but I, I'm cheered on, I, I continue because they believe in me. When they ask me to do something, I literally just tell them, I shouldn't, you shouldn't trust me with this. Um, I remember, uh, 
they had me carrying something heavy. Uh, or my, my boss had me carrying... I have different bosses, by the way. So each one I've been talking about is different. Sorry about that. We'll just pretend they're the same one. But my boss is telling me to hold something. Or to lift something. He's like, how strong are you? Um, and I was like, I am... I, I'm, I'm, I'm underwhelmingly average. And he's like, come on, man, I believe in you. Um, this thing's like 150 pounds, so we'll have to split it. I was like, man, what are you, what are you telling me to do here, exactly? And he's like, well, uh, you're going to need to be pretty fucking strong to hold this, so come on. So we lifted it. We put it on the thing. And, and yeah, it, it squashed my hand, and I thought I broke my finger, but no, I I, I broke my finger nail. That, that fucking sucked. But th they trusted me with it, right? I mean, MT was right behind us, and she's a lot stronger than I am, so. He could have just got her ready to pick me, I guess, because I was having a bad day or something. Um, but I remember one time, so I have another coworker. we'll say her name is... Shelby. Fuck it. I'm probably going to forget that and give her another name later on. <laughs> Because Shelby is nothing like her real name. Um, but Shelby. Uh, no, no, we'll call her R. R is going to be easier to remember. She was like, uh, she was seeing how hard I was working. And she's like, you know what, Mikey? Um, you you are appreciated here. You just need to keep going. Um, and you'll get better at it. Um, and I was like, yeah, you're just trying to say that to cheer me up. And she's like, well, no, because I'm, I'm genuinely worried about what's going to happen. Um, on Saturday, and I was like, "Wow, well, what's happening on Saturday?" And it's like, "You're not going to be here, but we we appreciate you. You're the best." Um, and so I guess I'm appreciated enough to the point that they know I'm not going to be here on Saturday. <laughs> That's kind of, you know, I I personally think that they're better off going with any of the other ditch guys, but they choose me. So you just need to have the right people in your life. You need to have the right people to boost you up. You need to have nice people. And I... I, I just want to have the same kind of impact on people that they've had on me. I don't think I can get that, though. I haven't found anyone who's needed my help outside of... We'll say S. No, that's too much. Um... This, this, this is hard. This naming system without giving out people's names. <sighs> we'll say Donna. Boom. Donna. That's... Uh, I'll find something else. I will find something... No, Donna. We'll go with Donna. So, Donna. She... Is, um... Ooh, actually, let's tell another story. Um, uh, so, I remember overhearing, uh, so, TikToker was actually trained a little bit by MT. And she basically told him, I wouldn't know this until way later, but, um, apparently the reason TikToker sat next to me is because he saw my name tag and he's like, oh, you're, you're Mikey. Um, well, apparently the reason he knew who I was is because MT said that she wasn't going to be here for a few days, that if he needed anything, I was the person to go to. Um, and I was like, oh, that's cool, you're putting a lot of faith in me. <laughs> and, um, so, uh, TikToker responded with, he's just a busser, I don't think he's going to help me that much. Which, you know, ouch, but, <laughs> uh, Later on, when TikToker is training someone, he says, if you need anything about Mikey, he, he's very good at what he does. Um, I, I immediately tripped over my own foot and fucking fell. And uh, uh, TikToker had just said, like, he's the best there is at what he does. Um, and so she says, so, so we're fucked. And uh, <laughs> he's like, you would think so, but this man comes in clutch when he needs to. Um, but yeah, uh... He says, he may seem a little slow or a little clumsy, but 
he gets it together when he needs to. He, he's among the best here. And uh, so she immediately says again, we're fucked. <laughs> and um, TikToker basically said, uh, when, she, when she asks, what does he do here? And um, he says, well, he works on dishes. He serves food. Um, his title is busser, but I was a little confused on that. So I talked to a bunch of people. He talked to the manager. And the manager said, well, he's a busser. Well, or he's like, the manager basically said, officially, he's a busser. Unofficially, does everything on the side. Literally fucking everything. <laughs> um, and obviously, I do dishwashing, too. So, they mentioned that. But, he goes on to mention that, like, um, when he talked to MT, she said, and I quote, he's a little bit of everything we need right now. Well, MT, um, she is always talking about me behind my back, and it is literally always nice things. Um, you know, there's that line, but when we got Donna, who came in, oh my god, god damn it, when Donna came in, um, okay, hold on, my monster tastes are really fucking weird, it's, I guess, I guess I have been talking for like an hour, so, when Donna came in, and she was being trained by MT. Uh, MT told her I was the nicest person here. Um, and so I, when when Donna told me that, um, she didn't tell me who said it. Um, not until way later. But she said basically, "You're the nicest person here," uh, because I said. So, okay, so it's like, well, um, so Don was telling a new hire, well, uh, so he's apparently the nicest person here. Uh, I mean, you know, he's got a bit, of, he's a bit of an asshole when he's joking around because he, it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's like, that's not exactly what she, she's like, basically like, he, when he's joking around, he's kind of an asshole, but he, he never, he's never like a jerk. He's always nice and stuff. He just got a bit of an asshole sense of humor because yeah whenever someone fucks up I or does something stupid I point it out you know like what was it um that's that's a story for another time right my sense of humor but basically they're telling me like you they're, they're saying like so he um he's the nicest person here and uh I was like the first time anyone's ever called me nice joking obviously I mean most people don't. I don't think anyone's ever called me nice to my face, but, you know. And, uh, so Donna's like, um, it, well, that's weird because it's true from what everyone says about you and from my experience with you. And I was like, wait, who's talking about me? And she's like, well, MT said specifically that you were the nicest person here. That you were very knowledgeable about everything. To go to you if I needed anything. I was like, that is the second time she has told a new hire to do that. And the first time she's told a new hire that I was the nicest person here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, she's telling TikToker that I'm everything we need around here and telling Donna that I'm the nicest person here. Uh, she puts a lot of faith in me. That it, it's very, very scary how much faith she puts in me. But it is nice having someone believes in me consistently. I mean, because I'm, I'm pretty sure some other people, they, their faith in me probably wanes sometimes. I, uh, I, I made a remark, though, um, that I said my, when I fucked up on the dishes the first time, and then I was fucking up on the side, um, pretty consistently for a few periods because we were getting really busy. I made some remarks and I said, um, I was talking to MT and I'm like, 
The only reason I'm still employed here is because my personality and my humor, if I didn't have that, I'd be fucked. And, uh, MT said, that's not true. You have, you're very good at what you're doing. And I was like, look around you. We're, I, I was arguing with her, you know, not the smartest thing to do. But I was like, look around you. I can't keep up with any of this. And she's like, and you think I can? And then uh, the manager came up behind me and she's like, yeah, well, she, she's right. Um, we'd be screwed without you. Uh, and then said that you're better than you think you are. So having people that, that believe in me and boost me up really helped get me where I needed to be. I'd say otherwise, I probably would have been. But I got people who show me kindness and I got stuff that I feel like I'm good at. I mean, I'm not good at any stuff at work, but <laughs> outside of that, I, I know consistently I'm like the funniest person there. Um, and TikToker <laughs> said that I was the only reason he hasn't quit yet. And yeah, I, I've had, we've had people quit. Um, pretty sure, uh, what was it? Shelby? Was that the name I came up with? Pretty sure she quit. I haven't seen her in a while. Um, uh, Donna quit. I haven't seen her even longer. And so, yeah, um, a lot of people have quit. Pretty much everyone that was there on my first week was gone by my second. And I've been working here nine months and I've seen a lot of people come and go. But the ones that have stayed have said that they've stayed because of me. I mean, you know, I think MT was lying because... <laughs> She's worked here for like three years. I've, I've been here for nine months. So, um, but, you know, it's nice having people say that. Um, having people that believe in you is, that makes you go further than you would go on your own, I think. But, uh, then, uh, when I was at Good Work, uh, good, good Work, when I was working at Goodwill, um, that place was a toxic work environment. Um, you weren't allowed to talk whatsoever, so making friends was hard. I figured it out. I Figured out how to make a friend, I guess. Friends is a bit much. So this was a toxic ass work environment. Nobody trusts me with anything except for my friend's mother, who also worked there. Uh, EB's mother. Who actually trusted. She she was explicitly told, hey, you gotta take care of. Because um, some special needs come, kids come in there through a work program um, to see really if they're capable of that kind of work. Um. And so, uh, EB's mother, uh, put me in charge of those kids when she was explicitly supposed to be in charge. And I was like, why are you trusting me with this? And, uh, she was like, you seem trustworthy. Besides that, you're like them. You would know what to do. I was like, damn, I'm actually an expert on something. So I felt really good about that. Um, but she was the only person to trust me there. And, uh. I mean, Evie didn't even fucking trust me there. But, uh, one, I, at first I was like, what do you mean I'm just like them? It's like, well, you're here with the same reason that my son is here. I was like, fair, fair point, <laughs> fair point. I mean, I had figured that out, figured out that shit prior, because he was just like me, but, you know. But yeah, with this jumpy timeline, um, I like having people who believe in me. Um, it's a rewarding feeling, um, everyone at work seems to believe in me. I mean, you have, uh, I have, uh, we'll say S Sid, Sid, uh, she hated me when I first started working there. She recently fessed up to that and I was like, what, what? I fucking knew it. She was always finding something wrong with what I did, but she's nice now. And then kind of concerned about my health. I was drinking, um, I just drank like three monsters and she was like, yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing that. And, um, she was looking at it and she's like, this has a lot of sugar and a lot of sodium and 
that can't really be that good for you. And I was like, eh, don't worry about it. That's not gonna, the monster is not gonna be what kills me. And she was like, oh god. <laughs> um. So, um. Yeah, also only Mikey kills Mikey. That's kind of a little joke me and Evie came up with when we play Worms. I always blow myself the fuck up. Only Mikey kills Mikey. So I'm pretty sure if I don't kill myself, I'm immortal. I will be here at the end of time, motherfuckers. I'll be here long after Betty White. She's been here since the dawn of time. I'll be here till the end of time. Um. But yeah, anyways. Uh. Without throwing a golden girl into the mud. Um. The. Uh. Having, you know. Goodwill was a toxic ass work environment, but I had one person that believed in me and trusted me with stuff when I don't trust myself with anything. Dude, when, I, when I'm making Legos, when I'm playing with Legos, I don't even put stickers on there. I wait for someone else to do that because I'm always going to fuck up the sticker. Is that is that a mood, by the way? Does, does anyone else relate to that? So, like, god, god damn it, just paint, paint it on. Why can't you just paint it on? Why am I putting the sticker on? But anyways, uh, she trusted me and that made it a lot easier to go do. But, um, uh, at work, or at McAllister's, I have a lot of people who trust me, and a lot of people who put faith in me. Um, we'll say Mick. She, uh, I said, why do you people trust me? This was today, by the way. Why do you people trust me with anything? Because I spilled a bunch of tea on the floor. And she was like, because you're trustworthy, and you're nice, and you always get the job done. I was like, well, I just fucking spilled tea everywhere. I bet that wasn't that, how's that getting the job done? And she's like, well, technically, I tasked you with emptying the tea urn and cleaning it. So you've emptied it. I was like, you know what? Fair point. Efficiency. Just dump that shit in the floor. He's like, so technically, even though this is a pretty disappointing manner of completing your task, you're one step closer to completing it. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> Efficiency. I was like, damn. I mean, do always complete my tasks. But yeah, I have a tendency to, uh... You know, the only person who's better at self-pity and having a low opinion of myself. Or of themselves. The only person that's better than me at that. Better at me than that. No. Better than me at that is Batman. I'm just saying, he's the only person. The only fucking person... I could never compete with Batman on that level. But yeah, um, I guess that's the end of the video, is my, basically my fucking, my whole fucking, my whole ass fucking life story, which I am actually adapting into a sitcom, WandaVision style. That's gonna be one of my first, because I, I kinda wanna get into writing, and I guess it's gonna be easier if I just write out shit that actually happened. Like making a documentary about World War Two. It's like a documentary of my life, but it's funny. Maybe. Hopefully. Like I said, I'm the funniest guy ever. So, I'm like the funniest guy ever. Which, uh, you know, I know I'm funny as fuck. That's the only thing I believe in myself for when it comes to that. Because, even though it doesn't carry over on my YouTube videos, unfortunately. Because I need to get, like, a partner to talk with and stuff. Do it Game Grumps stuff. Because I bounce off of people a lot when I do video games. Um, I always have people fucking laughing and shit, and I'm genuinely funny, I know that, because everyone else is laughing. My humor is, I mean, that's not really, like, subjective, right? I mean, if everyone's fucking laughing at me, then I'm fucking funny, that's, that's facts. What was it? Like, I fucking said, my boss is like, why are you still here? I'm getting real tired of seeing you around here. And, um, she was joking because I was taking too long to do one of my tasks, right? And then she's like, nah, I'm just kidding, you're cool. Um, and I said, well, if you're, if you're so, like, tired of seeing me, then you'll be happy to hear 
that, I'm, that I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I'm not scheduled. Or I was like, she's like, why? Because I said that? And I was like, no, I'm just not scheduled to be here. And she's like, oh, that sucks. Uh, we, we, might, if we, we might need you, so I might call you in. And I was like, please don't. <sighs> but uh, I was like, well, I have good news for you. If you don't want to see me, uh, I'm going to go do something fun tomorrow. And if it doesn't go my way, you're invited to my funeral. And then I went on to say, uh, or she's like, what are you going to do that's, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know, but it'll probably be on my tombstone. And she's like, fuck that, I'll bring you back to life. Um, so, you know, I got a little humor like that. But, uh, then, I got this one guy that thinks I'm just going to shoot up the place for some reason. It's a joke. Um, he doesn't actually think that. But, he's always got these rings on his hands. Um, and I was... And someone was talking shit, and so I was like, I wouldn't talk shit about him, uh, those rings look like they would leave an impression, um, those rings on his hands look like they would leave an impression, uh, and they, they, you know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't piss him off, and they were like, damn, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a funny guy, right, I just need people to bounce off of, hey, I could probably get MT or something in a video or something eventually, if this goes anywhere, I suppose. Um, like I said, this is Friday, July 30th. So. Yeah, but that that's the video, guys. Um, I, I hope this story was helpful. Uh, admittedly, I should probably put a disclaimer that you can stop watching after the first 13 minutes. Because the rest of this is just kind of unimportant. I mean, I'd still watch through it, but, yeah, maybe I... Mm. Sort of, this is just off the cuff. I didn't really have a script for this, so I'm a little all over the place. I will make a TLDR version of this video at some point tonight. So, um, yeah, actually, I'll get to that, like, immediately. So, later, guys. Have a nice night. Um... You know, we're fucking party on. Uh, nope, that's not gonna work. Mm -mm, that's not a good outro. Have a nice night, or day, or whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. My new outro is have a nice night. Stay safe. Boom.